Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create this fun 19th inspired stickers using a cool new feature in Vectorator, Offset Pad. There's a lot to do, so let's start. I first sketched out all my stickers in Procreate. If you want to use my sketches, then download them from the description below. Feel free to have fun and change my design. I'm really curious what you guys come up with. I'm first placing my sketches on the artboard. This is not their final size or placement. I just wanted to create a rough composition first. A quick tip, hold down one finger to preserve the proportions. Otherwise, it's going to look distorted. Okay, now that I've locked this layer, I can start vectorizing. This is my color palette. I will use white for the sticker background and black for the contour cut and some accents. As for the rest, I was inspired by the statics of the 90s. That's why my colors are so loud and saturated. I'm going to use the same five shades for all my individual designs. This way they look like they're part of a sticker pack. Let's start with the first one. Similar to all the other stickers, it's a geometric design, so it's easy to recreate it with the shape tool. I'm just making a rectangle and changing the corner radius directly from the quick actions. Let's also lower the opacity, just so we can see the what's underneath. Then with the pen tool, I'm tapping along my sketch to add all the little details. I mostly have to tap once, but in this corner, I tap and drag to make sure that my pad takes a curved shape. Let's create a color block moment. Select the main shape and then change the color from your palette. Here I'm using the oval tool to create the circle. Again, be sure to hold down one finger while drawing. Then I activate the duplicate mode to create the second reel. And then I align them horizontally from quick actions. To draw the tape itself, I'm going to create the two additional circles. Looks funny now, but just trust the process. We're actually going to make it look like the tape is peeking through the people. But first let's duplicate it on the other side. And I'm going to make the second circle smaller, so there is more tape on one side than the other. Afterwards, let's draw this rectangle or the peephole. And now let's work with all these shapes together. I've noticed that it's easier if I unite the two circles right now. And I'm also going to change their color to black to mimic the color of tape. Now select all the shapes and hit mask. For the buttons, I'm just drawing rectangles and changing their corner radius, so they are soft around the edges. Then I group them all together and place them behind the cassette player. I've created these decorative lines. They don't really mean anything, but they look cool and they give more dimension to my drawing. Just tap once to start the line, tap again to define it, and double tap to finish the vector path. For the headphones, I'm starting off with a rectangle again. Rounding up the corners and rotating it slightly to fit my sketch. I think this is all that we can accomplish with the shape tool. Since the rest of the shapes are so irregular, I'm going to continue with the pen tool. But the pencil tool is a great alternative if you are still learning to work with vectors. For the upper part, I have a pretty cool trick. Just remove the fill, turn the stroke on, and increase the stroke width. For the rest, I'm going to keep the duplicate mode close by, because I'm copying everything I did on one side to the other. Don't forget to flip so it's oriented correctly. Now for the cord, I'm still using the pen tool. I want it to look like kind of natural and kind of messy. Whatever I'm drawing on top of the cassette player now will be placed behind when I'm done because I don't want it to be too distracting. So from layers, I just move it down here. All right, I like to keep all the elements of my cassette player in one layer. If you create each sticker like that, they're easier to work with later. For example, it's super easy to make all my elements fully opaque in one go. Moving on to Rubik's Cube. I'm basically just starting with the base, which is black. Since it's a super simple shape, I'm tracing it with the pen tool. It's tempting to just draw straight lines here, but to give a three-dimensional feel, make sure to draw this little dance in between the squares. Plus, the corners are now super sharp, so be sure to tap and drag to draw a curved path. 
For the colorful squares, there are a few ways to approach this. You can create a rectangle and then move each corner node with node tool, so it matches the correct angle and perspective. This is what I did here. Then picking my colors randomly, I'm going to fill them in. Not thinking about the logic behind it, so if it's logically incorrect, don't come for me please. The second way to do this is simply tap with the pen tool in each corner, and I think this is easier. So I continue with this method until I finish my entire cube. Finish off by coloring each square. Turn opacity up. And it turned out super fun. Alright, now for the rest of my stickers, we will go faster through the process. But each time I'm using a new technique, I will make sure to explain it in detail. For this one, I'm using the ellipse tool to create my main shapes. To unite my shapes, create an orange rectangle with the pen tool and place it under the pink oval at the top. I've used the same technique to finish up the main shape of the film. Now I want to give it a texture. So I've created this simple line on top of all my objects. And then I've duplicated it a few times until I covered the entire film. Group them so they are easier to edit. So if I want to stretch them across the entire film, I can do it in one motion. Don't forget to unite the bottom oval and the main rectangle of the film. So now once you select all your shapes and hit mask, the stripes will look like this. I finished off the rest with the pen tool and node tools. And for these little holes here at the top and bottom of the film, I've created a rectangle with very rounded corners and just duplicated a bunch of times. The next one is the Tamagotchi. I've used the pen tool to create all my shapes. The most tedious part was my little dragon pad. It's made of all these tiny squares which I've actually created individually and then duplicate again and again and again. The slink also took some time to make it, but it was fun. You basically just draw an oval of a certain color. Then you duplicate it, change the color of the duplicate and then pull on the orange handle to change its rotation. It gives the illusion that all these shapes are actually connected to each other. Bear in mind that around this point, you have to start placing the new ovals behind the previous ones. For the Game Boy, I used a lot of the same techniques as before. I'm creating regular shapes with the shape tool, but always rounding the corners when it comes to rectangles. Most of the other details have been traced with the pen tool, as usual. For the last sticker, I've used a few cool tricks. So first of all, to quickly create the shape, I picked the star tool and move this slider to 24. This means that our star has 24 points. And while creating it, you just need to hold down one finger. This will change the angle or sharpness of each point. So now we've got this, which is super close to sketch that I created. 
To make it even closer, double tap on each point to make it rounded. Ok, now let's draw the other circle, which is super easy. Make sure fill is off and stroke is on. And I want the writing to follow a curve path, so for that you just need to draw another smaller circle in the middle. Align it. Then I'm picking up a pretty underrated tool in our app, the scissor tool. And I'm tapping on each side, left and right, to cut my pad. It might not look like it now, but I've actually split my circle in half. Let's write 90s and baby in Futura Bolt. Then select the text with the semicircle and tap on place text on pad. And we have achieved this curved effect super easily. I changed a bit the position and orientation and that's it. Last minute I actually decided to change the color. And with that we're done with our last sticker. But there is still something that we need to do. The important part here is to create the cut contours that will inform the printer where to make each cut. So for the Rubik's Cube, we need to select the black background element for this operation. Go to the Pad tab and then tap on Offset Pad. That's it. You can always change the offset properties depending on how close or far you want the laser cut to be. Now for the film, we need to basically replicate the background element that Rubik's Cube had. So just duplicate the entire object, remove anything under a mask and unite. Now you can do the same Offset Pad operation as before. Nineties baby is simple, just select the star shape and go directly to offset pad. Then change the colors, stroke width and offset as you want. I did the same thing for the rest of my stickers. After a quick yellow background, this is the final result. Hope you enjoyed creating with me today. Please let us know if there is any other tutorials you would like to see from us. Hit that red subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Bye!